Welcome to the Anglican Tradition series. This is series number five, number two. And in this number two trailhead, I want to talk to, about F.D. Morris and his notion of Anglican comprehensiveness. F.D. Morris was probably one of the most important Anglican divines of the 19th century. And in his own thinking, he sought to understand the fullness and the richness of the Christian tradition in all of its grandeur. In the previous session, I talked about the difference between Christian tradition in a capital T, uh, tradition in a small t, and traditionalism. F. D. Morris's notion of Anglican comprehensiveness has a great deal to do with the capital T, uh, tradition. Uh, so Morris, in many ways, in the 19th century, brings together Christian tradition in the big, large, epic sense, or seeing from the summit, uh, within the uh, debates and dialogue uh, of the Anglican heritage itself. By the 19th century, Anglicanism tended to be divided into three parties, or tendencies, or interpretations of the Bible and the tradition. There was the low church heritage, or small t tradition, which brought together the reformed heritage that emerged in the 16th century in the dialogue between Cramner, Latimer, Ridley, Luther, Calvin, this interaction uh, came to define large elements of the low church reformed heritage from which the evangelical wing of the Anglican um, big T tradition emerged, and then also the charismatic heritage. So there was the low church um, heritage within the bigger Anglican tradition. There was the broad church or latitudinarian uh, perspective also which was defining and attempting to dominate large elements of Anglicanism. Uh, this emerged from the period of the culture wars, the military wars, the theological wars, uh, particularly where Christians went at one another theologically. They divided uh, over confessions, over whose interpretation was the best and the correct of the Bible and the tradition. And the broad church pleaded tolerance. Uh, particularly with those who assumed that their particular interpretation of the Bible was the correct one, and if you differed with them, you must be wrong or heterodox and not truly orthodox. There was also the high church or Anglo-Catholic interpretation of faith, in which those from within that particular perspective were attempting to recall the Catholicity of the church. Uh, Pre-Reformation and then some of the leading uh, Catholic thinkers after the Reformation um, particularly the Carolyn Divines and those who continued that Catholic heritage uh, in terms of their interaction with the Reformed and Broad Church tradition. Now F. D. Morris essentially argued with his notion of Anglican comprehensiveness is that all three interpretations had to be seen as part of the round table of a healthy and vigorous understanding of Anglican theology, liturgy, church life, and uh, Anglican comprehensiveness. Uh, sadly so, many who turn to the Anglo-Catholic revival of the 19th century and see it as the uh, genuine form of Catholic Anglicanism in opposition to the low church reformed evangelical and the broad church uh, liberal have shrunk the notion of Catholicity as an oppositional interpretation of faith in relationship uh, to low and broad church Anglicanism. F. D. Morris, I suspect the reason F. D. Morris shied away from using the language of Catholicity is because it had become in the 19th century as a result of Cardinal Newman, Keeble, Pusey, and those who followed the Oxford uh, renewal, uh, a, a, a form of defining the church uh, in terms of re a reaction, a purist reaction to the dimming of the fullness of the faith uh, in terms of the direction the liberal and low church uh, um, tradition was going. So F. D. Morris came along with his argument in one sense of the big picture, seeing from the summit, Anglican capital T tradition, drawing from the fathers as they interpreted the Bible, but he refused to be drawn into either the low church the high church or the broad church understanding of Anglicanism. Hence his, his, his articulation of Anglican comprehensiveness attempted to bring together high, 
low and broad in a conversation round a round table that best embodied what he saw, thought and saw was the genius, genius of Anglicanism and really the way into the future. Those who fragmented high, low and broad were really just perpetuating forms of Protestant fragmentation and Morris would have none of it. And this is the, the fullness and the richness of F.D. Morris who furthers Anglican comprehensiveness and in that sense ties together a Christian tradition in a big sense with a comprehensive vision of faith, life and the world.